Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. Man, it's good to have Patrick back. Amen. Yeah, it's good to have him back and his family are back and joined us. They had a great time of vacation and so we're excited to uh, have them. Uh, before I send the kids out, there's something that I, I, need to, I need to pay a debt here real quickly and they probably don't even remember it, but I do. Uh, I, I, need, uh, I need to say this before the kids leave because this has to deal with the kids. Uh, Dave and Brittany, and uh, this also goes for Rusty and Sharon. Do you know that Evie and Riley are always right? <laughs> They're always right. Now you're wondering, what was that all about? Well, Thursday morning when we loaded up on our bus to go home, well, these two young ladies were sitting right behind me. And I was laughing because they were talking about, it. I said, how tired they were. I said, oh, you girls be asleep before we get out of here. And they said, no, we're not going to go to sleep. I said, yeah, you will. You'll be asleep. And they, then I, they said, well, if we're not, if we don't go to sleep, you have to tell everybody we're always right. <laughs> so I'm thinking, man, I got this. This is no problem because I know they're tired. So I said, well, sure, I'll do that, thinking... They're going to go to sleep before we get out of the campground. Well, Evie was sitting right behind me, and to keep herself awake, you know what she did? She talked to me the whole way back. <laughs> now, Riley sat behind her. Riley just kind of sat there quietly. But Evie, to keep awake, she'd say, okay, now how far is it? I said, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. Okay. We drive about two minutes. She says, okay, how much farther do we have? <laughs> and talk and talk. And finally she laid down for a minute. And I thought, hallelujah. <laughs> she, I think she realized her eyes were about to close. She sprang back up and asked the question, how far have we gone since I asked you last? <laughs> so anyway, they stayed awake the whole trip. And uh, I owed them that. So I told them I would certainly say it's the ladies. There you go. I, my debt has now been paid to you. Now, kids, kindergarten through sixth graders, you can go. I should have done this after they left, and that way they would have never been able to say anything to me about it. But anyway, hey, we had a great week at camp. It was, it, the kids were great. Uh, the sponsors, man, I want to thank the sponsors. Of course, Philip went with us uh, as, as one of the other sponsors. And then, of course, Aura did such an amazing job. And then Morgan went with us. Uh, and uh, Madison uh, went with us, so we just had a great time, and, and uh, of course Jacob, and many of y'all don't know Jacob, but Jacob also went with us. We had a great time. Man, it, I told you it was going to be hot, and it was hot. Amen, Philip? We had a cool week prior to us going, and they'll probably, knowing my luck, they'll have a cool week after we've been there, but it was a great time. Thank you for praying for us, for helping with the kids go, whatever it is you did any time during this week to think about us, to pray about us, thank you, because it was a great, great week. Today I want to talk about, as we continue connecting with to serve in 2021, continue on with the idea of connecting to people. Now the idea of connecting to people is that where we are now connecting to those people who are in need. The title of my message today is just that, connecting to those in need. Folks, we just sing about there's going to come a time that we're all going to be able to rise up and we're going to stand face to face with Jesus. Amen? Do you believe that? Okay, let me ask you again. Church, do you really believe that? And do you really believe that Jesus is coming again? And do you really believe that those who are dying without Jesus will be separated from God for an eternity? Then, my friends, listen to me. Do you understand? We talk about there's physical needs, there's emotional needs, but the greatest need that everybody has is a need for Jesus. People are looking for something, and the world is running all over the place trying to find something, and the answer to everything is Jesus. So when I titled this message, it is Connecting to People in Need. Now, we're to connect to each other because we all have needs. And we've been talking about connecting to the church, connecting to the body, connecting to believers. And that is what we need to be doing. As a matter of fact, we're doing that even in a greater way. And man, this, this summer, we're doing our summer connect groups. And I've been hearing 
amazing things from all of our groups, ranging from Sunday night all the way through Thursday evening. Man, we have groups that are meeting and having a wonderful time. Man, everybody's been telling me what a great time it is. So we are to connect to that. We are to connect to each other. But my friends, there are people in this world, there are people in Lot and there are people around you who need something more than anything else, and that is Jesus. So we need to be willing to step out, if we will, step out of ourselves, step out of our group, step out of our church, and begin to make connections to those in need. We're going to be looking today in the book of Luke chapter 19. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me there. Luke chapter 19, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 7, a very familiar passage of Scripture that I think uh, has not been given the power that it deserves because we're going to be reading about a man named Zacchaeus. And most of the time, unfortunately, in the church, Zacchaeus and the story of Zacchaeus has been relegated to being nothing more than a, a children's story. A story for kids. But that, can, I, can I tell you this, that the idea of Zacchaeus and what took place there is not just a children's story. It is a story of showing how Jesus connected to those most desperately in need. And that's what I want to read today. I want to look at a couple of things from this text this morning. So if you have your Bibles, you here and you at home, if you're able to, would you please stand in honor of reading God's Word this morning. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short of stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, the crowd, when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Would you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings you've given us, for the opportunity to gather here today to sing your praises. And man, what a great time it was. And now, Father, as I step into your, your word here this time, I pray that you would open our minds and hearts to you. Father, I pray that the, the words I'm about to say are not my words, but Lord, they'll be your words. And I pray that the message that I have here this morning, sitting on this table, is not a message that I came up with, but Father, it's a message that you did, that you gave to me to share this morning. And I pray, Father, that the response of everyone here or those watching in, on, on live stream, Father, would not be the response that I would want, but Father, it would be the response that you desire. Father, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We see here that uh, most of the time we are connected to people in the church who are really the same as us. And, and that, that's, that's good. It's good that we connect. That's why, again, we're having the summer connect groups that I want to encourage you to be a part of. Because they are very important to the, to the strengthening of the body. But too often, that's where we, we get stuck and we kind of hang here in the church when all the time God has called us to be stepping out and making connections to people who are in need for Jesus. We see here in this story, again, a children's story that is much deeper than that, is the idea of meeting people where they are and meeting people that have a need. There's a great story here of connecting with people. Now we see that the church, and this is where I said a few weeks ago, I believe the church in this area is kind of at our weakest point of making connections outside of the church, making connections to those who are in desperate need. We see here that Zacchaeus was a man who was in desperate need. The Bible even called him a, a sinner. The people called him a sinner. What they were saying was not that he was lost, but this is a dirty, mean rascal. They weren't concerned about his lostness. They were concerned about his occupation. They were concerned about his character. Because this was a man who was a tax collector. And the Bible says not only was he a tax collector, but he was a 
commander, a, a captain of the tax collectors. He was in charge of the tax collectors. So this guy was getting filthy rich over stealing from people. So he was a man who was, as the Bible said, was a, they called him a sinner, who was a rascal, who was a cheat, a liar, and a thief. They wanted nothing to do with him. So this man we see was interested, and he knew, my friends, that he had a need. There was something missing in his life, and the Bible says that he ran trying to find it out. Can I tell you today, the world has a need. They know they need something, but the problem is, just like Zacchaeus, they didn't know at that moment that it was Jesus. He said the Bible says that Zacchaeus ran looking because he wanted to know who Jesus was. What is it about this man? I've been hearing a lot of stuff, and, and I'm needing something. I don't know what it is, but I know I need something, and I'm going to go find out who this guy is and see if he can meet that need. My friends, can I tell you today, the world has needs. The world is a needy world, and the world needs something. They don't know what it is, but they know they need something. That's why the world is going crazy as it is today, because people are running here and there trying to find something that makes sense to them. They're grasping hold of anything that they can that might just make a little sense and give them some stability in their lives. And my friends, they're needing something, and just like Zacchaeus, they don't know what it is, but my friends, you and I do. Let me say that again. He may not know, and the world may not know what they need, but we do. We in the church know that, and it's up to us to make sure that we present to them, that we connect to them like Jesus did, that we connect them to the answer. So again, this is where I believe the church shows some signs of struggles. But today I want to look at a couple things that we see from this text that I think would be very valuable to us. The first one was Jesus was intentional about connecting to people. He was intentional about it. In other words, he had a purpose for what he did. Jesus never just wandered around and hit from one place to the next. Everywhere he went, he had a purpose. Everywhere that he was aiming at, he had a purpose in it. He never said, I'm just going to go through a town and whatever happens, happens. But he had a purpose. And the Bible tells us at the end of this text, in verse 10, the Bible tells us what it was that Jesus' purpose was all along. And he says here, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus had a purpose. He had a purpose for going through a certain town. That's why sometimes he didn't go around a town. He went through a town because he knows that inside that town there are people that need him. There are people that are searching. And his goal was to seek and to save that which was lost. So my friends, can I tell you, the church today needs to be intentional about our connection because we have the same purpose that Jesus has to seek and to save that which is lost. Now, let me, let me stop right here for just a second and tell you something. I know the church can't save anybody. Amen? Let me say that again. The church can't save anybody. But my friends, we can seek them and we can present to them the one that can. So that ought to be your purpose and my purpose. If we're a part of the church, if we're part of the, the invisible universal church, and if we're a part of a local body church, the ecclesia, then we ought to be reaching people, seeking them out, being intentional about it, not just going, well, if somebody falls in front of me, then I will be able to talk to them. No, we need to be intentional with everything that we do to be able to seek out lost people. Can I tell you, as I did in the first service, lost people, my friends, we might think this, but can I tell you, lost people are not hard to find. We don't have to go digging in the, under the rocks and, and hiding behind the bushes going, well, man, I can't find a single lost person around. Can I tell you, there's a lot of lost people in Lawton. Can I tell you, they're going to be walking right in front of you every single day. As a matter of fact, some of them might be living in your house. Some of them might be in your family. But we need to be intentional to be seeking out those that are lost, our neighbors, those who live right around us, seeking them out. And Jesus had a purpose, and that needs to be our purpose. And here's the cool thing. Jesus never missed an opportunity. He sought out the opportunity, and any time an opportunity came, he took it. We see with this idea, with the fact of, of never being too busy to make a difference. Can I tell you where Jesus was going right here? 
Do you know where he was headed at this point in this story? Jesus was headed to Jerusalem, and he had already told his apostles, I'm going to Jerusalem, and guess what's going to happen to me there? I'm going to go to Jerusalem, I'm going to to hang on a cross, and I'm going to die, I'm going to give my life for you. That's where he was headed. Now listen, I don't know about you, but if I had that trauma coming in my life, if I knew this type of thing was coming, that I'd be so consumed about myself and I'd be so concerned about what was going to happen to me that, man, you could, you could, you could just blow horns around me and I probably wouldn't pay a bit of attention to it because I would so, be so wrapped up in the torture that was coming my way. Jesus knew the torture. He knew the separation that was coming, but yet he was still never too busy. He was never too preoccupied occupied with what was going on in his life to be able to make a difference in somebody else's that's what he was doing he was on his way and he was seeking out those that he could still share his life with this is what was going on so we see here that Jesus was never too busy everywhere he went he was looking for that opportunity and he never missed the opportunity and can I tell you this God will always provide an opportunity because we as the church, you and I, we must always be looking to make a connection. Be aware constantly. As I just told you, it's not hard to find somebody that's lost. We just have to be open up in our eyes to look at it, to see, to see the way Jesus did. And here's the thing, God will provide someone for you. When you are looking, and I've told you this many, many times, that if you decide, God, send me somebody to make a connection with. Send me someone in great need. Here I'm going to tell you, my friends, you will have somebody placed in front of you immediately. As a matter of fact, when you walk out of here today, no matter where you go, you're going to have an encounter with somebody that's lost. And you need to be looking for an opportunity to make that difference. Because you can make a difference in somebody's life. And it may be just the mere fact of of saying good morning to them. It may be a mere fact of just talking nicely to them. Even if we feel we're not good at it. Even if we say, well, pastor, I'm not one of those type of people. I'm not an outgoing individual. I'm not an extrovert. I'm more of an introvert. Listen, can you listen to this? Even introverts can say thank you. Even introverts can say, hey, great job. Even introverts can smile at somebody. Whenever you're going to be leaving out of here today, and if you happen to go go to lunch somewhere, can I tell you, you, you ought to be, listen, we as Christians, you ought to be the nicest individual they run into today. You ought to be able to make a difference to that individual No matter how good you think the service was, you can still make a difference in their life. Again, you don't have to be an extrovert to do it. Just say, thank you. Just leave a good tip. Say good morning to them. Ask them, can we pray for you? Whatever it is, wherever you go, God is going to place somebody there that you can make a difference. And people are needing, listen to me, people are needing someone in their life to give them some encouragement. And you know who that should be? It should be us. Why? Because we have Jesus. We have that answer. We can't be too preoccupied with our life. We can't be in too big of a hurry that we're not willing to stop and say thank you. To make a difference in somebody's life. My friend, Jesus was going to the cross. And he still had time. To look up in a tree and see a man that needed something in his life. And he realized it. And here's the thing. Because of that, Jesus took the initiative. He took the initiative to make the connection. Jesus called out to Zacchaeus. He didn't wait for Zacchaeus to fall out of the tree. He didn't wait for Zacchaeus to get out of the tree and, or drop down and jump in front of him and say, Hey, Jesus, I'm here. Show me something. Make a difference in my life. Because listen to me, he didn't know all of that. The world doesn't know. We can't wait on the world to come to us. We have to go to the world because the world doesn't know what they need. So they're not going to rush into the church and say, Hey, church, we need Jesus. Help us. 
Because if they were, we wouldn't be having any empty chairs in here. So we can't wait on them to do it. Jesus looked up and he knew this man needed him. This man needed what he had to offer. And Jesus took the initiative. He wasn't going to wait on Zacchaeus. When he looked up in the tree and he saw this man, his, his gut began to hurt. He began to have that gut-wrenching feeling. You remember that compassion we talked about last week? Do you remember that word, that uh, spagnazumai? When Jesus looked up into the tree, his spirit his stomach began to turn because he looked up. Man, he, he didn't see a, a man who was a criminal. He didn't see a man who everybody hated. He didn't see a man that didn't deserve anything that he had to offer. He didn't see a man that didn't deserve the time of day that he had. He saw a man that was in desperate need of him, and the Bible says that he even had compassion on him. And when he did, he called, he took the initiative because there was a man in front of him that needed Jesus. My friend, today you and I need to leave out of this church and we need to look around and we need to have that gut-wrenching feeling in our stomachs. This man who was despised by everyone else, Jesus knew that if he walked away from him and he kept walking under that tree, he ignored the man in the tree, he was too busy for the man in the tree, Jesus knew that when he walked under that that could possibly be the, that man's last opportunity to be saved. My friends, today, can you and I understand this? That Jesus took initiative, you and I need to take initiative. We need to be seeing people for what's going on in their lives, that they have a great need for Jesus, that you and I, if we continue to walk right on by them, that can you understand this, that we could be their last opportunity to be encouraged for Jesus. Do you see how important this is? This is what Jesus saw. This is what Jesus looked at. This is what he was going after. He called out to Zacchaeus. But the second part of that is that Jesus used relationships to connect. He didn't just say, hey, Zacchaeus, I'm the son of God, and keep walking. He said, Zacchaeus, come out of that tree, for I must, I must be at your house today. Zacchaeus, you need me with you. So Jesus used that relationship. He said, I'm going to your house today. He's going to make that connection by relationships. And can I tell you this, that I truly believe that connections should be relationally driven. What I mean by that is when Jesus looked up at Zacchaeus, he didn't actually just see a, a project. He didn't say, well, there's another I need to add my number to. So I need to get that man out of the tree. He's my project. No, he wanted a relationship with him. He said, come down because I must be in your house today. My friends, we need to be looking at the lost world not as a project for the church. Can I tell you, we very seldom ever, and I don't know that we ever have. Now, we've had uh, things where we do outreach, but we've never had what we call high attendance Sunday at First Baptist West. Do you know why we don't do that? Because if we sit here and we say, okay, I tell you what, let's say if, you know, we, we, could, we could see right now we have 280 empty chairs that we can fill up in here. So our goal is to get 260 people in church. So we go and we begin to find people. Hey, everybody, come to First Baptist West because we're having high attendance Sunday. Do you know what we're really telling them? Or what I feel we're telling them? Because if we haven't talked to them before, and we probably aren't going to talk to them after, do you know what that sounds like to them? You don't care about me. All you care about is that you get me, get me in your seat. Because I'm a project for you. And once the project is over, the interest is waning. Folks, that's why we don't do it. Now, look, we, I believe in outreach. As a matter of fact, you're going to start hearing next month the idea of what some plans that we have for September called Outreach Explosion. Man, we're going to use the month of September. We're going to reach people. We're not going for high attendance. We're not trying to see how many people we can get in the church. We're getting to, to get our church focused on the fact that there are people that are lost and we need to reach them. 
And we need to be bringing them in to hear the message of Jesus. They're not our project. They're our relationship. We want to build with them. We want to encourage with them. We want to eat with them. We want to be a part of their lives. We want them to be a part of our lives. That's part of relationally reaching people for Jesus. Man, there's people right around us that we probably don't have any idea who they are. But can I tell you the chances are there's a good chance they're lost. Jesus connected through relationships. I must be at your house. I must have a relationship with you. Because you're more than just a number to me. You're more than just a project to me. So we see that they're more than a project, but Zacchaeus also needed this. Jesus connected to him because Zacchaeus needed Jesus. He needed a relationship because, can I tell you again, there wasn't a whole lot of people offering to come to Zacchaeus' house, and there was definitely no one involved asking him to come to their house. He was needing a relationship. He was needing somebody that actually cared about him. Can I tell you, there's a lot of people out in the world today that just need to know that somebody cares. We live in a, we live in a lonely, lonely society, my friends. There are a lot of lonely people in Lawton. Now, oh, they may have all sorts of technology around them. They may have 10,000 friends on Facebook. They may have thousands of followers on all the other medias. But they have nobody to actually have a relationship with. Zacchaeus needed somebody, somebody to say, hey, you're worth it. There's lonely people in Lawton tonight, today that need somebody to say to them, you're worth the time. You're worth the time. And that's our job. There's great needs in our society. And if somebody's hungry, guess what? We're there to feed them. If someone is thirsty, we're there to give them a drink. If someone needs clothes, we're there to give it to them. If someone needs, and the Bible says even visiting, we're there to visit them. Not to run home, get out of our car, run into the house, lock the doors up as fast as we can. I heard a comedian one time talking about the good old days of when people used to come over. And some of you older ones probably remember this. And he talked about when the doorbell rang, everybody jumped up and said, Whoa, somebody's here. And they all ran to the door to see who was at the door. And said, oh, hey, come on in. We got cake and we got stuff waiting on you. Man, we always had something there. Even, even we who were poor always had something we tried to offer because we were excited when somebody came over. And the comedian said, man, people were saying, come on in. Don't touch that cake because that's for guests. Man, when the guests come over, we got coffee, we got cake, we got this, we got that. Sit down and visit. But then he went on to say, boy, but today, the doorbell rings and everybody goes, shh, who's at our door? Did anybody call? Did anybody say anything? Shh, don't let them know we're home. Let's hold up. Shh. Somebody comes down the stairs. Somebody here. Shh. This is kind of how we, he says, this is kind of how we do. Because this is our way of hiding ourselves off. So used to, man, we were prepared for guests. Now we're offended by them because it takes time. It takes time to build relationships so we don't get out of our car and hope our neighbors are not in the yard so that we can get in the house without having to say hi to them. Jesus made connections through relationships. My friends, that's what can I tell you, that's what people need today. They need relationships. They don't need programs. I talked about that last week. They just need to know people care, man. Just talk to them. Get involved in their life. Oh, preacher, that just means I've got to get out. I've got to get close to people. Ooh, you know how. Uh. Friends, can I tell you, if we have that gut-wrenching feeling for the lost people, we're going to be looking for opportunities to make a difference. Zacchaeus needed this. And once again, Jesus showed passion for people more than passion for a program. 
He showed passion for the person rather than his intent of what he had to go do in the next few days. He showed passion. I want to close up by saying this, my friends. We, the church, must be passionate about people. I mentioned it last week. You and I, we have to grow passionate about people again. Because can I tell you this? You and I have got to know that people need Jesus. we got to start knowing that again. And not just knowing it, well, yeah, we believe all people are lost. Oh, Lord, please save the lost. No, we need to know. We need to have that gut-wrenching feeling that people need Jesus and we're willing to do whatever we can possibly do knowing that they need Jesus. And then here's the last thing I'll close with this. You and I need to realize we are all, and that's in all cap letters, that we are all called to connect to people. It's not just the pastor's job or the pastors of the church. It's not just the deacons or the Sunday school leaders or even the summer connect group leaders. It is for all of us who know Jesus, we are called to connect to people because they need Jesus. And we need to be willing, Lord, here to say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, I open myself up, I open my house up, I open my life up, whatever it is I need to open up, Lord, here I am, because I know these people need Jesus, I know these people are lonely, I know I probably have church members in my church that are lonely, I got teenagers that are lonely, I got kids that are lonely, and that's one of the things that we saw even at at, at kids camp, kids are lonely, they need somebody to care, and if all it takes is for me to go to, to, to summer camp with them to make a difference for them, to remember my pastor cared enough that he was there at camp. My pastor cared enough that he read the Bible to me at night. Sign me up. If that's all we have to do is make connections, sign me up. That's what the church should be saying. Sign us up. Sign us up. I'm not saying that you're going to have to go to summer camp. I'm not saying you have to go to Falls Creek. I'm not saying you have to do vacation Bible school. Now, that would all be good if you did, amen. But I'm not saying you have to do that. But we need connections, my friends. Because you and I have answers. Not answers, plural. We have an answer, singular, because the answer is Jesus. For people that are lonely, it's Jesus. For people that are lost, it's Jesus. For people that are confused, it's Jesus. For people that need direction, it's Jesus. We have it. And we've all been called. Remember last week we talked about, pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers. Why? Because he said the fields were white unto harvest. But man, those laborers going after them, taking initiative, having that gut-wrenching feeling for them, that willingness to do whatever it is we have to do to open up our houses, to open up our lives, to open up our hearts and our minds, to open up our church. He said those are getting fewer and fewer all the time. But can I tell you, the needs of the people are not getting fewer. As a matter of fact, in our day and time, the need for Jesus is greater than it's ever been. We need to make connections. The greatest connection, though, that you need, the greatest connection that anyone needs, you at home, the greatest connection you need is Jesus. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, Man, you don't need anything else. You don't need to make any other connection. You need to call upon Jesus. And I believe the Spirit is taking initiative today. I believe it with all my heart because he laid this sermon on my heart and he wanted that point of initiative that he, Jesus right now is taking the initiative and I believe that he's calling someone here today to salvation. Someone here or someone at home needs Jesus today. Would you call upon Jesus? He's calling you. Would you respond? But I also believe he's making a call to all of us here in the church to make a difference in people's lives. He's making a difference for us to make a difference. He's calling us. 
Because the need is great. The need is so great. But the responses are getting fewer and fewer as we go. Would you be willing to say, Lord, here I am. Sign me up. Sign me up. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for all that you are. Thank you for your call this morning. Call to salvation. Also, your call to surrender. Your call for the church to make a difference. And let it begin right here today. Father, I pray if there's someone here or someone at home that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that, Father, that they would hear you calling them today as you've taken the initiative you're issuing the call you're speaking you're telling them you must come into their life today father i pray if there's anyone here anyone listening that father they would turn their life over to you today just saying father forgive me of my sin come into my life i receive you into my heart i receive you as my sacrifice Father, would they respond today, right now. And Lord, I pray for those who are here that know they're saved, for those at home that know they're saved. But Lord, they realize they've not been making the connection to people. And that God, they, they, they hear you calling today that we need to be connecting to those around us, to our neighbors, to the people we come in contact with, that Lord, we can make a bit of a difference just by showing you in our lives. We don't have to be great extroverts. We don't have to be great witnesses. Lord, we just have to be sensitive to your spirit. And I pray today that that would take place right here <clears throat> through First Baptist West, Lord. And move today. Move today. My friends, if God's speaking to your heart, would you come? Would you at home respond, whatever he's calling you today? Hear us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. And would you join us today? If God's speaking to your heart, would you, would you just call out to him? Respond to him today. Would you come? In Jesus' name, amen.